Good evening. Thank you for joining us this Monday on Iron Sharpens Iron. I am Minister Clarissa Dowdell. And I am Aisha Willis. And Minister Aisha Willis. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on today. Um, if anyone who remembers last week, we were still talking about the armor. We were talking a little bit more about spiritual warfare and explaining the things that we have the power to defeat. So this week, what I would like to do is what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what the enemy's tools look like and not even just the enemy but things that we have to wrestle with what they look like because not only do we have an enemy out there to battle our biggest enemy usually comes from inside of us so we want to talk about what it looks like when we're battling what we have going on versus what it looks like when the enemy is actually attacking us from the outside. And then we're going to even touch on a little bit what it looks like when God is just doing something in your life and it's his process. So we're going to get into that tonight. Um, Minister, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, no, I, I think that, uh, as you know, we were discussing the, the warfare and everything. And I been contemplating on the subject matter since we said that we were going to be discussing it from last week and mm -hmm. all types of things have been kind of running through my head and I have um, I have come up with well not come up with but what kept popping out in my mind was it's something you said on Sunday oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday you spoke on Genesis and how Jesus was a response to what happened in Genesis. Right. And I thought about the dynamic between Eve and the serpent. And I thought that that's the perfect example of us as a problem and him as a problem. Okay. And mm -hmm. where and, and the dynamics of what happened in that interaction and how we reflect that on a day-to-day -day basis and where the inner me becomes a problem or when the enemy is a problem okay. and even when God shows up right and how God handles a situation I just thought that that was a good example of how each role is played That's when you true. think about it being played out I never thought about the Garden of Eden as yeah. a situation but it is because you had whatever Eve was dealing with and then the serpent came outside so we always have internal factors and external factors right so a, and, a then, and then God speaking to right the interaction of the two exactly because god just does he thinks that he can just do whatever he, he wants just to come do in and just he do just what does he whatever does. he wants in our lives like he's in, in charge but i'm okay with him being in charge it's better when he's in charge much better it falls all the way to um wrong when i'm in charge I'll tell you that right now amen so what i i, I like to think about is we're going to start with when it's us okay when we're dealing with us okay. when what it looks like when we're struggling against ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our own issues that we struggle with because we were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Mm -hmm. So there are some things within us naturally. Paul says, when I want to do right, evil is always present with me. And when he says evil is present with me, he's not talking about the enemy. Mm -hmm. He's talking about himself I, because I take me wherever I go, <laughs> which means anytime I try to do something right, what's inside me is always present mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's so important to to die daily mm. and this is why it's it's always saying the bible is encouraging us like no the flesh and the spirit are always at war with each other because we never want to do what's right never i i never want to do what's right and the only way to come to a place where we do desire to do what's right is to kill our flesh mm -hmm. and our flesh has to constantly crucify it daily so what it looks like with the flesh i thought a good example um it's not necessarily an example but it's a good scripture that reflects what it looks like when we're facing our own things. And what I um, saw was, I thought about James. Mm -hmm. The book of James, James chapter 1. I love the book of James. It's a very small but powerful book. Mm -hmm. There's so many. It's, um, for me, the book of James is like, they say, scientifically speaking, that when you, the, the power that's inside of an atom, mm -hmm. when, you, when you get into the atomic power of a thing, mm -hmm. It's so strong that it, can, it defies gravity, it defies magnetic poles, it defies all these other forces that we think are so strong 
and Adam is stronger than that. Wow. But it's tiny, like mm -hmm. infinitesimal, yeah. almost tiny. Mm -hmm. And that to me is what the book of James is like. To me, the book of James is like, it's the short, I think it's yeah. like four or five chapters, tiny little book, it's a few pages. But if you really get into the book of James, first of all, it's a book that's going to keep you convicted. Yeah. It's a book that's going to have you constantly looking at yourself, like showing how far you have to go and how short we always fall and then to me James is a good book to keep you humble it's, it's a really good book to keep you humble so we're going to James chapter 1 and James chapter 1 verse 13 it says let no man say when he's tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man but every man is tempted when he, he is drawn away of his own lust and entices. Come on. Let's get into it. Right there, that scripture is telling you the biggest problem is you. Yeah. God is not bothering you. The enemy is not bothering you. You have your own lusts. You have your own desires. You have your own issues. You have your own things that you are wrestling with. So when I look at something, and if I go on a diet, and I go into a restaurant, I cannot say, oh, that's the enemy. No, because I like that cake, or I like <laughs> that food, that has nothing to do with the enemy. That's me dealing with what I desire, with uh -huh. what I crave. So that's an, an example of... Some things have nothing to do with God or the enemy. It's just us. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And again, um, I'm so glad that you came from that and you're talking about sin because, in you know, again, and just meditating and contemplating on all of these things, I um, there are three types of sin. Okay. 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 So. Oh, see. Y'all done messed up. She got a notebook. <laughs> I so. broke out my notebook, so. y'all. So you have sin, which in Hebrew is chata, or ch chata. And that means an offense, or missing the mark, or any thought, or word, or action that is disobedient to the will of God. Okay. That seems pretty very general, very general, general, very basic, or whatever. Then you have iniquity. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. about it. Iniquity, um, and the Hebrew word is awan, A-W-O-N, for you Bible scholars out there, if y'all are interested. And that word means... Um, per perversity or uh, in the character mm. it, it is to deal with it's, that's a heart issue when you have iniquity um, and it is a, um, and it is a, uh, a defiance of God's standard it's a defiance of God's standard and then you have transgression ah. and transgression is crossing over a boundary and that word in Hebrew is pesha or pesha and it is infringing on another or another's property. So now, just in ref reflecting on what you were talking about in the Garden of Eden with Eve, she, when you have lust and you have reflect, you know, combining the two from the Garden of Eden and what you're talking about in James and how it's your lust that brought you into there. Eve wanted to eat that apple. Right. And she right. knew what the truth was. She knew what the standard was that God already established. She was not ignorant to the fact. Because she had a conversation with the enemy right. about it. And she said, no, God said this. So she knew what the truth was. But the enemy, when he operates, and I don't want to jump ahead, but when mm -hmm. the op enemy operates, he twists it and he lets you know you won't die. But what you want to do this. And the point that I want to point out is a lot of times with us, especially when we're wrestling with our lust and our and our, you know, our own mindset and me being hard headed and all these kind of good things. Cause I, you know, at the end of the day, it starts, you know, home first. Home is us. Um we don't want to suffer at all. And we don't want to give up what we think we are due. And that mindset is the thing that's always going to, that's the biggest inner me fight. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, I, I get you. You understand that. what I mean? Mm -hmm. If that we, we all talk about, um, it's the inner me or in the enemy and everything. Mm -hmm. like, no, but the biggest problem is we want what we want. Right. And we want it how we want it and we want it when we want it. And until we die to that desire, oh, Holy Ghost. Mm. Until we die to that hope, that, that desire to get it our way, I, uh, 
how we got to have it being hard headed, being, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just contrary, contrary on every aspect. And you might be right. You might be following all these P's and Q's on this side, mm -hmm. but this I, you refuse to dot just because you just want to be, I, just, I don't want to dot it. And that's just the end of it. Right. And this is what the thing that, that inner fight, mm -hmm. that inner thing, we have to have a piece of us and our way. And we don't want to totally, completely die. Most of us have our old man on life support and we not understanding why mm -hmm. we are in the struggle that we in, in struggle. Death, death is so essential. Death is so essential because it's, it's hard enough that we are imperfect beings. It's hard mm -hmm. enough that we're going to be dealing with ourselves forever. But if we don't die, if we, if we choose to live, you have to understand to be alive in the flesh is to be dead in the spirit. That's just how it works. And the way we're made up, our body, psychologically speaking, and even our, our, our flesh, physiologically speaking, everything is done for self-preservation. Our body is designed to keep us comfortable. Everything, when you get into the homeostasis and the different things in the blood, our body is different. It's a fancy word to say in balance. I know what it means. Our body, oh, she gotta throw it out. Our body is designed to keep us comfortable. Mm -hmm. Our brain is designed to keep us safe. That's the way it's designed to operate. So when something happens or the unfamiliar or fear rolls up, the brain has an automatic reaction to do whatever it needs to do to make us feel comfortable again. That's the way our brain reacts. That's the way our body reacts. You get cold, your body shivers and shakes and needs to regulate that temperature. Your body and brain is designed to keep you happy and comfortable. So the only way to get to a place in ministry where you're able, because all of this always comes back to ministry. And it comes back to living life. And the fact of the matter is, if you are looking for your comfort, and if you are looking for your happiness, you are not looking to be effective in ministry. And what you are doing is you are setting yourself up to fail. Every time you come in contact with certain temptation, you are setting yourself up to fail. Every time you come in contact with something that's just a little bit complicated, something that's just a little bit difficult, that once again, probably did not come from God or the enemy, but it's just life. It is just growth, and then we shy away from it. Well... I want to, if I can interject for just a moment, I know you used the word ministry, but I think this is, because sometimes people hear ministry and they think church, and they think my title, my assignment at, you know, church, okay. and um, when we all have a ministry, mm -hmm. and that's just the assignment of being a child of God, but just to kind of broaden that, just to walk in agreement with God, because... I think that that is important to point out because it's not so much just about um, how you are. Yes, you want to be effective with who your, your fellow man, and yes, you want to be impactful in your community, and you want to be impactful on your job and your in your relationships in your home and and at your church. All that that's wonderful, but the number one relationship that is key first is 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 upwards mm -hmm. that god kingdom heaven conversation and relationship has to be in order and because god will not look upon your sin or whatever he has an answer for it and that's why he he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins and he covers us with the blood however when we make a conscious decision under the blood mm -hmm. to still transgress against his standards and his precepts he still can't look upon that and now we got to go through the whole uh, process of purge me wash me creating me a clean heart renew a right spirit within me and you snotting and carrying on and wasting time almost in this posture of correcting your your um your lateral relationship with god mm -hmm. um lateral, vertical your vertical relationship with god because you do not want to die to yourself. And the thing that's wonderful about that, you know, you hear that word dying and it sounds so final and so hard and harsh. And good God Almighty, it's just like die to myself. Hold on, Slick, that's a lot. But the power of God is the resurrecting power of God. And then when you, that's the whole thing that I'm talking about is loss. We are so consumed and overpowered by the idea that if I allow myself to die, if I allow myself to not exist any longer, 
then I won't have anything recognizable. But what he will give us is so much greater. Mm -hmm. But we don't allow that process of him resurrecting the true version of ourselves. You know, you get where I'm coming mm -hmm. from with that? I get exactly. Where I'm and it's so much bigger than ministry. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can't be an effective minister if you're not effectively walking with God. Uh -huh. If you're not effectively being, if I can't be the best version of Aisha, I certainly won't be the best version of Minister Aisha. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know, you got to start with the basics first. Mm -hmm. And then you can go on to, then you can go on to all the other stuff. Um, and I think that that's important for us to point out. Because um, we, it, it, it's bigger. Here's the thing about me. I like to work backwards. And when I say I work backwards, I mean I start big and then I draw back to the core of the thing. Mm -hmm. So I start with words like ministry okay. to put things in perspective. I'm the opposite. I start to with pull it. back and show yeah. you at the core of it because sometimes we hear things and that's the thing. We hear it and we get intimidated. Uh -huh. Where if you would understand what the core of it is, it's like the earth, right? You have the earth. You have us, you have us sitting in the globe. The earth is a globe. I'm not getting into this with you. The earth wow. is round. It's a globe. We're not, okay? We're not going there. It's a globe. The earth is a globe. <laughs> in the core of the earth, right, you have this core here. At the core of it, it's levels. It's liquid metal because the core is burning hot. The core of the earth is burning hot. I'm trying to make this, bring us I'm trying to make this as the... easy as possible. This is my point. Okay. The core of the earth is burning hot, uh -huh. right? Surrounding this burning hot core is is liquid metal because it's so hot that it's melt melted. So it's like it's like nickel and then still like all these different core metals. Mm -hmm. And it's spinning and it's moving and it's moving. We look at the earth from afar and we see the whole globe. And we see the atmosphere, and we see the sky, and we see the birds. Where the fact of the matter is, what's driving the atmosphere is the core. If you understood the way that the core of the earth works, the core spinning, hot metal moving fast creates a magnetic field. So because that core is doing this, the planes can fly. The birds can navigate to the south. The atmosphere is the way it is. The ozone layer is the way it is. That because the core is spinning. So when I say ministry, I'm going to give you something broad. But the fact of the matter is this ministry becomes very, very easy. Very, very easy when at your core, you are dedicated to dying for God. At your core, you make a decision that, no, for God I live and for God I die. When at your core, you make a decision that, Lord, the way you want me to do a thing is the way I'm going to do a thing. And when you dedicate that way at your core, the rest becomes easy. Right. It keeps your ministry spinning. It keeps the anointing spinning. It keeps power spinning. It keeps all of it spinning. So I just, I just do things backwards. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's simply a matter of when we're talking about fighting things, and fighting your own personal temptation. I just, I, I, my goal is for people to be extremely realistic. Mm -hmm. And I find that sometimes people use language and it's not appropriate for that situation. People love to say the devil is a liar in a situation that has absolutely nothing to do with the devil. <laughs> like, for example, I have this friend and she texts while she drives and it drives me crazy. And I'm like, yo, you want me to get a ticket one day? You want me to pull one and get a ticket? The devil is a liar. That's not the devil. That's you texting and driving, <laughs> and you're going to get pulled over, and you're going to get a ticket. That has nothing to do. So when that happens, or you, die. Can't, say, you or can't say, oh, the devil is a liar. I got this ticket. No, you were texting, and that was your own personal issue. So this is what we do in general in life. We do things, or we come face-to-face -face with temptation, and we, and we succumb to it, and we submit to it, and then we get caught. We go, oh, that pesky devil, the meddling kids. They, he was not bothering you. That was your own personal internal fight and internal struggle that you had going on that when you subdue your internal struggle now the enemy has to try a new trick uh -huh. up until then you're tripping over your own feet uh -huh. okay does that make sense i understand what you're saying do you think there's an end to tripping over your own feet i think there's an end to tripping but i don't I think we're going to have this issue to the day we die, but we don't have to trip. You can stop. You can see it like when a kid is walking, when a baby is learning to walk, 
he's a little unstable because mm-hmm. he's new to walking. Mm-hmm. He doesn't understand that that's stairs. Mm-hmm. The baby doesn't understand that, no, we put you on this bed, please stop rolling. Because if you roll, you're going to roll off the bed. Mm-hmm. You know, if you keep up, those are stairs, you're going to tumble because you're not steady in your walking. Mm-hmm. But the more we begin to walk, we can recognize, okay, I see those stairs. I don't have to tumble down these stairs. Mm-hmm. I can walk down these stairs because now I'm equipped because I've been walking. So now I recognize if you're driving and they put speed bumps in the road, the speed bump isn't going to go away. But if you drive too fast over, it's going to mess your car up. Mm-hmm. But if you see the speed bump, and you slow to a reasonable speed, you'll go over the bump and it won't hurt you. Mm -hmm. So I think that because we're imperfect, we're going to have struggles till the day we die. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a taste for certain things. We are going to be battling with certain things. And, you know, you're going to pray like, Paul, get this away from me. God's going to tell you, my grace is sufficient. You'll be okay. Rock out with that thing. And it, what he's saying is, I don't need that struggle to go away because if the struggle goes away, then we don't need him anymore. If we, if we stop struggling, then we stop being in a place of, God, I need you. And we think that we got it. Mm-hmm. So we that's always going to be there, but it can't always get the best of us. Okay. It can't, we, can't, we can't keep losing the same fight. I can't. I've been in church now for a little over 10 years. I'm not still losing the same fights I lost when I first came to church. At some point, you have to mature. At some point, you have to grow up. At some point in this walk, you should, you should be strolling. And if you're still tripping over those old things, that's a problem. Okay. 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 But there will forever be something. Because we're imperfect. Because that's what makes the blood the blood. And that's what makes it effective. And it keeps you in a humble place. And it keeps you reminded that I am sick, and it keeps you reminded that, God, I need you, and I don't deserve. Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. It keeps you in that place of, I don't have it together, and I never will, but God, if you would just, don't take your presence from me. It keeps you in that psalm space of, Lord, wash me, purge me. Please don't take your presence. It keeps you in that mindset, and that is one of the safest places to be. Mm -hmm. I agree. To walk with God and to stay with God. That's the safest place people do. Um, I think that it's important as we are it's easy to when something when something becomes uh, norm mm-hmm. we stop thinking it's us and we stop well we stop thinking it's him we start thinking it's us mm-hmm and um, I think it's in um, James that it talks about working out your own soul salvation. Mm-hmm. Not working for salvation, but working in your salvation so that you can maintain the posture of salvation. Um, not that you can lose it because it wasn't given to you. It was not, it, it was not your choice, right. in other words. But there is a there are levels to how you walk in it mm-hmm. and like you said there are things of bathing christ you know you know how can, how is it you come this far and you still require milk you know you mm-hmm. should be working on meat or you know there are there are levels to this walk right. and i am, um, am in agreement with that i think that when we are um when we are effective in our walk with God, mm-hmm. um, He puts things before us to buffer us. We're not there yet. You're absolutely right. Yeah, we're not there yet. We're not. We're not there yet. Because right now, it's all about our issue. Well, this is uh, if if I could if I could I wasn't gonna go that that far mm-hmm. as to talk about God, mm-hmm. but what I was saying is is our issue is. Um, Especially the older you get, mm-hmm. I, I can't speak to nothing else. But the older you get, um, you begin to draw comfort from being stuck in your ways, mm-hmm. and that buffet that God is sometimes sending does not feel 
good at all. And we will reject it because we want to remain stuck in our ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of us will lie to us, a lot lie to ourselves about it. And that, you know, not to go back to what we used to talk about, but that whole belt of truth thing is real. Mm -hmm. When you're when you're being honest with yourself, no, you like being in that place. Mm -hmm. It's a comfortable place, it's an easy place. I understand. And even though there are aspects of that place that are displeasurable, I got used to the displeasure, displeasurableness of it, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So I know what to expect, I know how it's going to come, and I can deal with it. I'll deal with it, no problem. I know that if I stay at this parking spot for too long, I'm going to get a ticket, but I already saved up my money, and I know what the ticket's going to cost me. And as long as I pay it by this time, I'm Gucci. And you keep going on, and you keep doing that same cycle, and you keep in that state, mm -hmm. same state. And... Um, when you are trying to move higher in God, and again, I'm not talking about ministry. I'm not talk, just talking about the conversation and the relationship that you and the Holy Ghost have with each other. You're one on one. Even that reflection, even that constant, I, no, I need you to fix this. No, I need you to fix this. Mm -hmm. It's a continuous thing. And if we don't do it, there is a, a blind eye that he will turn, and you don't even know it. And you're walking around with this blind spot, and you don't even know you got the blind spot. Mm -hmm. you, you, and you, you're good and strong. You're showing up on time. You're looking good. Oh, I'm not stumbling the way I used to stumble. But you have not given this thing over for victory unto the glory of God. And you're holding on to it. And because you're so used to it, you don't know that you got this sin, transgression, and this iniquity tucked away in your back pocket, holding tight to it. You won't even surrender it over to God. Let's speak to that, that inner me struggle, mm. that real struggle that most of us have. Cause, well, let's speak to it then. Um, <laughs> you want to speak to it? Um. When you get to that place where you know what it is, when you get to that place where you're identifying this thing and you get to that place where you haven't surrendered it and you get to that place, because there's two people that you just described. You've described one person who knows what they're doing and refuses to change, or we're talking about somebody that doesn't know they're stuck in this cycle. So let's talk about those two different people. Okay. The person that knows and refuses, that's why they got God's blind eye. The person that knows and refuses, that's why God says, I'm not going to wrestle with that. When you're ready to give it to me, I'll take it. God is not going to fight you for you. When you're in a space where you know exactly what your issue is, you have identified it, and you have identified that you are not ready to surrender it, what God will do is go, well, when you're ready to surrender it, you let me know, and until then, that thing will run you, and you think you're running it. It's like addicts, people who suffer with addiction. Sometimes they think they have a hold on it. You never have a hold on your addiction the way you think that you do. Once you get to that place where you're an addict, you're not, you're not in control the way that you think you are. So if you're someone who knows exactly what you're doing, God is saying, okay, that thing will run you when you're ready to surrender it. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't know, if you're somebody who is ignorant to what your issue is and you don't know why do I keep having this issue, why am I in this space, why am I stumbling, why is there no growth, why is there no, what is my problem? Now when you're in that space, because God is who he is, he promises people like that, that if you are in fact looking for an answer and you're crying out for help, I'm here to help you and I'm here to give you the truth. And he may give you the truth in the form of you go to a guest church and somebody's preaching on your issue, somebody prophesies into you, you go to read your Bible one day and it opens to that scripture. But if you have a heart, he's not a liar. He says, if you seek me, I'll make myself found. So if you are genuinely confused and you are seeking understanding, he promises to give you that. But if you are walking aware of what you are doing and choosing not to obey and choosing not to surrender, then you will be subject to that thing. That's how you, we have two okay. types of people. 
Okay. Either you know or you don't know. Okay. If you know, then you know that's on you. If you don't know, he's here to help you. Mm -hmm. And you have two of those versions of the people out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So how do we, as ministers, minister? Well, when you're dealing with somebody, and, and I'm speaking as someone who I myself have never struggled with addiction, but you I have, have any type of addiction? I haven't struggled with addiction. I have grown up around and been around people who did struggle with addiction, right? Okay. And well, I've been you around on, things. I'm going to ask you one question, yeah. just because I, that's a very interesting statement you just said. So, are we classifying addiction as one particular thing or just all addictions? Because addictions come in, you can be addicted to sugar and don't know it. I ain't talking about drugs and alcohol or sex or. When I say struggling video. with addiction, struggling with addiction is a very specific thing. When I say struggling with addiction, there's a reason something specific pops into your mind because that's what it's labeled as. We're not talking about. I got an issue with this or show that. We're talking about people who struggle with addiction like drugs and alcohol and gambling. Addictions that are labeled as what we call like top tier addiction <laughs> okay. where you would need an intervention. We're talking about that. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So, because we're talking about someone who's aware. You said, how do we help somebody who's aware? But, I, and, I, and I'm, I, don't, I don't mean to keep prodding and, and digging in there and I understand the top tier addictions but most people especially if you and, and by most I mean okay let's let now let's bring it into the church no 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 keep no, it no, out, no keep it out keep it out okay so we'll keep, keep it, it out, out. The church and because you're about to make my point for me because no, 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 the fact no. matters you're like are we struggling with drugs or are you talking about people addicted to sugar and don't know it because we've already established there are two different types of people you have someone who knows what their issue okay, is so a heroin addict knows they're heroin okay addict. but listen to me not everybody's walking around as a heroin addict. Not everybody's walking around addicted to I'm not drugs. Talking to them. Let me finish my point. I understand what you're saying with, with, with addictions, but let's get out of the dramatic of it. I can't. Why? I can't because my point is about the dramatic of it. That's my point. Because but there are people about... whose addictions that are not dramatic are still tying them, and they're an addiction, and they're still broken, and they but can't I'm, move forward. But that's not. But that's not, that's not reflecting the point I'm, tr I'm trying to make. Okay, I'm making make a very point. specific point. Let me make your specific point. I apologize. My specific point is this, because you said, how do we, as ministers, because I presented two types of people. The person who knows exactly what their issue is and refuses to surrender and wants to stay with it. Right. And the person who has no idea. Right. So you asked how we deal with someone who wants and chooses to stay in their mess. Yeah. And that's why I decided to go with the example of addiction. So I was about to go to a very specific example. Oh, okay. Go, go to it. I apologize. When you're dealing with someone who is struggling with an addiction like, I'm going to say what I'm familiar with, which is like heroin, cocaine, right? Heroin mm -hmm. and cocaine. And the person knows what they're doing. The person is aware of the consequence of their actions. Their life is beginning to fall apart. There's a way that you handle someone who knows what the issue is and chooses to live in it. And there's a way you handle someone who doesn't know what the issue is. You can't handle these two people the same way. When you're handling someone who knows what the issue is and refuses to submit to it, we can't do anything more than God. And what I mean for that is God doesn't force himself on people and God doesn't force change on people. Once a grown person looks you in your face and tells you they want to do a thing, you are powerless to tell them what they can and cannot do. I agree. Once a grown person has made a decision that no, this is what I chose to do, then when you decide that you don't want to do it, I am here for you. When you decide you want change, I am here for you. When you decide you want growth, I am here for you. But I will not fight you for your deliverance. I will not fight you for you. Even if we go back into the church, when people come up and you're doing a prayer line or altar call, some people want to give it up and some people do not. As much of a prayer warrior as I may be, I can't pray something off somebody that they don't want going. I can't pray deliverance off a thing that you do not want deliverance from. So it first starts with that willingness. If the person is not willing, 
because they want to stay where they are and they want to do what they're doing, then you can't fight that person. All you can do is let that person know you're there. Okay. All you can do is let that person know that they have the option and they don't have to stay that way. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like this. You can get better. You can be made whole. You can heal. You do have family. You do have people that love you. We are here for you. That's all that you can do for someone who's made a decision to do a thing. Now, if we're trying to help people who don't know. If you're trying to help people who don't know, it's a little bit different because now you have to be wise and you have to be subtle and you have to find out how to handle that person. And that's when we get into things like when they do interventions. When they do interventions for certain behaviors, you're not supposed to use certain language because what you don't want the person to feel is attacked. So if you're trying to help somebody who has an issue or a struggle and they're unaware of their struggle but you see this thing is running them, now you have to be strategic. Now you have to be wise because if your goal as a minister or if your goal is as a friend or a family member, if your goal is to help the person, you can't attack the person. So now what you have to do is you have to do two things. One, you have to weigh whether or not you are qualified to help this person. Because some of us may have a desire to help people that we don't have the tools and qualifications to help. This is true. And this is why you go get the help of a professional. And when they do interventions, they go get counselors. And they go get people because though you may be my cousin or you may be my aunt and I love you, my version of helping you is hitting you upside your head and telling you to stop doing drugs. That's not going to help you. My version is to put you on blast and I'm sick of this and I'm like, that's not going to help you. Okay. So what I may have to do is go get the help of a professional. Okay. I may have to go pull on a counselor. I may have to go find a psychologist. I may have to find somebody who is equipped to help you. And so many times in the church, I don't know if we think that we have failed to do a thing, but it's the fact of the matter is, it's not that we're failing. It's that maybe you need to go get somebody that's a little bit more qualified. Maybe you need to get somebody who's a specialist. Okay. Maybe you, as, as a minister, maybe you need to call your pastor or your apostle for help. Maybe you need to call, this is why we have partnership in ministry. Maybe you need to know you have a friend that's a bishop in another church that's really good with issues like that. Maybe you need help. Because our, our apostle, likes to, he says this all the time, that the tools don't change. You educate, you encourage, and you wrap with services. Yeah. So if I'm here to help you, my job is to encourage you, to let you know that you have options and you have assistance. My job is to educate you on to what the issue is and how you can fix it. And to wrap you is to maybe I'm here, maybe I'm going to be your shoulder, and then maybe you'll be the advice, and then somebody else will be the counselor. But the whole point is if my goal is to help you out of this pit, if my goal is to help pull you up out of something that has swallowed you, because when we get to this point of you have this issue, this thing has now created a cloud over your life. It's created a stench on you where you, mm -hmm. wherever you go, you think you got it under control. Even when alcoholics are not drinking, you smell it because now it's coming out of your pores. Mm -hmm. So now you've reached a point in your life where your issues, where you think you got it under control, but it's coming out of your pores. Okay. So it's our responsibility to find the best way to help you. And sometimes the best way to help them is for you not to be the person to help them. I agree. Can I interject now? Sure. Okay. Now let's take the dramatics of it. Mm -hmm. Because you have a lot of people, especially in the body of Christ, whose issues, not drugs, they're not alcohol, they're not smoking cigarettes, they're not gambling, you know, but mm -hmm. they still have issues. We're talking about the enemy battle, right? Oh, I wasn't, no, I wasn't saying that's their issue. I was just using addiction as an example. Right. But because the techniques are still the same. Right. But every right. issue is the same technique. I'm still going to educate and encourage here's you about why, here's, 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 here's where I'm coming from. Because they're not the same. What we do is we make excuses for the things that are not dramatic. Oh, that's just each. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, that's just Clarissa. That's her personality. We blame it on other things. When does this, because this is iron sharp as iron, right? Mm -hmm. When do we get to the place where we get to the final? You said you like to start 
uh, backwards. Go and big you and go, go small. Yeah, go big and go small. Mm -hmm. So now let's get to the small of it. Mm -hmm. So now we're not dealing with we're not dealing with the fornication. We're not okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't fix that. You don't fix the drugs. You don't mm -hmm. fix the alcohol. You don't got your life right, mm -hmm. so to speak. But you still not walking in complete alignment with God because uh, right. there is a, a, a stronghold and an addiction, mm -hmm. an addiction to being right, an addiction uh -huh. to doing it Clarissa's way, an addiction to doing it Aisha's way. There is an addiction. Mm -hmm. We like to label addictions as the, the, when truth be told, if you really, and I know you were using that as a sample, but, but the solution is the same. That's what I'm saying. The solution is the same. Hear, hear me out though. Truth be told, the blatant addictions is just the, what's the word? The, it's the symptom. It's, it's the, of the symptom deeper. of something deeper. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about the deeper because that's the thing that God is trying to get to. Mm -hmm. And the deeper, and that's what I'm saying, it's the same solution because this is what we're here for. This is iron sharpens iron, yeah. right? So... The same way that, and that's why I'm saying you, I think you got caught in my example, and I use that because sometimes it's easier to put a label on something, right. just so you can use it as an example. But the fact of the matter is, Clarissa does have issues, mm -hmm. and Clarissa, in the same way that Clarissa gets over her issues, is the same way she gets to a place, and right now she's in a place where she is encouraged by leadership. She is mm -hmm. educated about what it is that she mm -hmm. needs to do to fix that. And she's wrapped with services. She's given assignments. She's given responsibilities. She's given wrapped with services because that thing has to come up out of you. So the way that we do one thing, if you have an issue, say you, okay, let's talk about me. Let's put me on blast, right? So say I have an issue with, like I used to have an issue. I used to have an issue with impatience and my tone. But the core of the issue really wasn't my tone and my impatience. The core of the issue was love. The core of the issue was I didn't have that fruit. So what I had to do was I had to be taught how to love God's way. And when I was taught to love God's way, it helped my tone. Not saying it's perfect, mm -hmm. but it helped my tone. It helped my patience. It helped my life. It, it helped, you but I still had to be given the, the resource tool. is outsourced. In other words, that love, mm -hmm. that love, change in love that you're talking about mm -hmm. you think that's something that should come from an out uh, outside source I think in the beginning you have to be taught because if I I had to be taught not just God's love because in my mind I love God so that's God's love but that doesn't mean I love his people the way he loves his people mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I love his sheep the way he loves his sheep so I have to go back here to this book mm -hmm. and I have to see how God loves his people mm -hmm. I have to go back here to the book and I have to see how God tolerates me. I have to sit on the phone and be rebuked by leadership mm -hmm. and be told he that when if souls is wise. I have to sit and I have to, because I have to be encouraged, educated, rapid services. So it may start external because if we're here for each other, which is why the Bible says no forsake not the fellowship of, you, of one another, because we have, your, you have your blind self. And maybe I can see your issue and you can't see your issue. So in the beginning, it may start as external. It may start as, why don't you read the scripture? Why don't we have this conversation with each other? Why don't we take this time? And after this begins to become, and that's what makes ministry ministry. Because it has to start with a person. That's what makes I us, agree. it has to, we have to see something and then make a decision to go assist the person. So in the beginning, it probably did start from the outside. In the beginning, mm -hmm. I had to have a conversation with somebody that said, no, you can't do stuff like that. And no, if you're going to do this for that. And then after that external conversation, I had to go reflect and I had to go back to this. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go back to this. And then that change had to happen on the inside. Mm -hmm. But the change happens on the inside, but it starts from what happened on the outside, which is why we have pastors, which is why we have I ministers, agree with which is why we that. have apostles. I go deeper. You, I, it's just not enough. You have to. The problem, like when you when you go back to the original story with Adam and Eve, the question God asks is, "Where are you?" That's what He's looking for. He's looking for a relationship. Mm -hmm. 
it's fancy. Everything is beautiful. It's beautiful to be wrapped with services. And I'm not knocking it. It, 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 it. God has put those things in place. That's why he gave some teachers, some prophets, some, some, some you know, evangelists. Mm -hmm. And he put those resources in place. I'm not knocking any of that. I'm sure. But the root of it mm -hmm. is relationship. Absolutely. So we have to build on. If you want to fight the enemy, then you got to. But you can't say relationship because some people have no idea how to have relationship. The same way in the natural. Some people have no idea how to properly love and how to receive love. So it is everything. And if anyone who knows anything about me and the way I teach, the core of everything I teach is relationship with God. That's where it starts. That's the only thing that keeps me. It's the mm -hmm. only thing I got. So it's all I give is relationship with God. But to come to a place where you just say, well, get your relationship with God. Some people don't know how to do that. I agree. So the solution is relationship, but that doesn't mean the person now knows what to do because you said relationship. No. What I'm saying is, and this this is not this is not a solution that's going to be stuff because this is a, this is a beginning of time and the end of time problem. This is a mankind problem. But when you don't emphasize. Um, you know, like the old mother's holiness is still right. Mm -hmm. And you don't, when you don't emphasize getting in the face of God, when you don't emphasize mm -hmm. that, I don't care how much you're under leadership, mm -hmm. you can love leadership and still get it wrong because mm -hmm. your relationship with God is not right. Correct. You have to edit that. You have to bring that under subjection. You have to surrender that. Ultimately, mm -hmm. that has to be as 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 uh, uh, Pastor always said. Uh, the be the at the beginning of the end day and at the end of the day, you have to start there. You have to end there. It has to be the middle of Absolutely. the day. It has to be relationship. Absolutely. And in that relationship, he will teach you how to yield to leadership, and he will teach you how to read the word, and he will teach you how to build on that. And uh, you know, I know we, you know. You will never understand the difference between the enemy's voice if you don't know what God's voice sounds like. Right. You will never understand, never ever understand the difference between your voice until you've submitted yourself to God's voice. Mm -hmm. But we, especially in the church world, we have a tendency to omit that process because... I got the bishop anniversary right because I got church anniversary right because I got the shout right because I, I can quote this scripture right. But your relationship is tainted and what your core heart and your character is off. You got transgression, you got iniquity and you got sin and you walking around with it and you okay with it. Because you ain't bringing it under God's objection. So my question to you is this, because you said relationship, and you have yet to say anything that I do not agree with. So my question to you is this, because clearly, <laughs> clearly you're looking for an answer that you're not getting. No, 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 no. So my, my, my question is this, what is not being said? Because everything that you just said is 100% the truth, and you're talking about relationship, because your first question wasn't relationship. Your first question was how do we as ministers help them? Yeah. So my response was based on how a minister can yeah. help somebody else. So now if your question is how do we as individuals improve our relationship, now let's talk about that. Well, because that's maybe, a different question. I'll speak to both. So the first is, as a minister, how we minister to other people is we, and this is why it's important for us to have it, we have to show them not just wrap them with services, but we have to show them how to get to that intimate place with God. We have to educate. Yes, mm -hmm. but not not every education is right this day. Absolutely. Absolutely. The thing. Absolutely. And it, it's, you have to be the example. And, and you have to know how to um, to sit in the presence of God and you have to know how to 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 love with God as your with God as your shield and Absolutely. with God being the the foremost of it. 
the forefront, forefront of it. You understand where I'm coming from? Absolutely. Today? And it's not that I was not in agreement with anything that you said. Everything you said was beautiful in the textbook. It was excellent. Fantastic. Well done. I'm telling you gold star. No, it's top notch. And I'm not saying that in any yeah, other way. <laughs> I'm just saying it was fantastic. But people are dying in out there. But that way, if we're going to talk about that, then let's talk about it. Then don't ask what ministers are supposed to do. Because if you ask me what a minister is supposed to do, I'm going to tell you what a minister is supposed to do. Now, if we're going to talk about how directly, as the minister, you help the person with their walk, sometimes some things are a process and you have to walk with the person. Some things are well, not you that. Some things are not one moment and I prayed this thing off you, you good, I prayed, let's go about our business. Some things, when you find yourself in a house, you, this is... As a minister, you now have a relationship with this person. And you have to go, come with me. This is how we're going to walk this walk. Yeah. Come with me. You're going to call me on this day. You're going to call me on that day. Some things are a process. That's why sometimes they tell some, don't even start helping somebody if you're not going to finish the work. I because agree. it's a process. I because agree. if you open somebody up, you now have to finish the work. I because agree. this is something intimate. This is something real. This is their life. Yeah. This is their city. It's your life too. This is everything. But now we're talking as a minister. This isn't about my life. Right? But it is about ministry. Let me tell you why. Because I. It's not about my life. When I'm while I'm helping somebody else, it's, it's not about my life. Of course, my life has to be right. My life no, is no, not no, right. No, 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 no. You misinterpret what I'm saying. Um, because this is iron sharp and Zion, right? And if I need help, mm -hmm. you think if God puts me as an assignment in your life. That is just you giving to me, but it's not growing you and buffeting you. Of course. And that's part of the higher. Of course. Yeah. And that's why I said, you, you say things in textbook, and it's, it's, I, I speak a certain way, but the fact of the matter is this. Every assignment that's ever been given me by my leadership has grown me. Mm -hmm. Even when the assignment is to grow somebody else. If the assignment is to teach that one and mentor that one, there's something in me that that's growing. There's something in me that that's training. While I'm training that, I'm training myself. While that's training, they, so even when the person thinks they're not giving you anything, anytime you do anything for God, right. anytime your goal is to serve, no matter what it is, it's always going to be something to help you. Yeah. If it's if I'm up with you every morning teaching you how to pray, that means I'm praying. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's, there's something there to help me. There's something there to get me to the next level. That's what makes ministry so fantastic because anything that you do for him, even if you don't have you in mind, will still bless you. Anything that you do in his service, even if you're thinking you're saving somebody else's life, it's helping you mm -hmm. and it's growing you. So even all of those things that you, that you have, if you're saying you're assigned to me, right? If somebody gets assigned to me, what that now means is I may have to pay attention to things that I do in a way I haven't paid attention to things that I do in quite some time. I may now have to pay attention to things that I say in a way I have not paid attention to things that I say in a long time. I may have to pay attention to how I move in a way I haven't paid attention to how I moved in a long time. Because the only way for me to be effective here is to keep this okay. Or I'm going to be a failure. Or I'm going to be like, but I told her what to do, why didn't she do it? Because you were failing. You told her what to do, but... You didn't reflect anything. So your words were hollow and your words were empty because there was no reflection in you as the person trying to help. It's like another addict trying to help somebody get clean. It's not going to work. And I'm going to keep using addiction. I, you know, I know you don't like it. I don't care. I I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep, like keep using it because yeah. in my mind, it makes sense. And in, in my mind, it's about putting things in a lane and in perspective. It's not, first of all, it's not that I don't like it. Because, trust me, I get it totally. And, and, and for the purpose of illustration, it is, it is fantastic. It's an example of it. My thing is, is my, my thing is, we need to, um, there is an example of how we have to live, um, more effectively and I'm not talking about just ministry mm -hmm. I'm talking about our personal walk Lord. this character walk My this soul. 
this this righteousness, this holiness, this right standing with God. And um, what was that thing? Ty Trippett got a song. And it's just like, how can you be directing the choir and you've fallen? How can you be singing a song and you've fallen? You in the pulpit and you've fallen. I, we're talking about, we didn't even get to the other things, but we're talking about that inner me battle, right? Mm -hmm. That inner me battle is going to continuously go on if we don't deal with core root issues mm -hmm. and bring it in under subjection <laughs> unto the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, a lot of Christians took Christ out of their walk. Mm -hmm. And they make, they make their experience about routine, about tradition, and they make it dogma, and they make it tradition. Mm -hmm. They do not make it about God. Mm -hmm. And what we, if we're going to do this, mm -hmm. all, all y'all out there, you know, I hope y'all are chiming in or whatever. I can't see it right now. Mm -hmm. But as we are going forth in this process and this walk, at the end of the day, he's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. Right. That's us. Our heart. Right. We got some serious, we got some heart issues going on around. Oh, there. yes. Oh, and, yes. And, 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 and a cardiologist ain't going to fix it. Correct. <laughs> and we have to bring our heart under subjection. We fell in love with things in the name of God and in the name of, of church. Mm -hmm. That is not of God, and it ain't and it, and it ain't of church. But we call it that. Mm -hmm. You understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So this is the thing that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the real enemy struggle. That that real. Um, let's let's really buffet that thing. Let's really get to the root of it, so that we can we can do some dynamic things as children of God. Mm -hmm. You know, we're supposed to be. Uh, according to the word, it says you're supposed to go on and do greater works than I. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Where? Wh why are the sick not being healed? Why are the lame not walking? Why su silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee? The problem is, is that the such as I have, nobody got. Ooh. And it's a problem in the body of Christ. God can't use you, but you think because you can pray, or you think because you got a word or a fancy tongue or sounds like fancy tongue, gibberish, whatever. We're not going to go there. That's another subject. But you think you're doing a thing and you're not. Mm -hmm. That's the real enemy struggle. Mm -hmm. That's next week, I think. And we can talk about we can talk about the, the part two and three. Amen. And that is, and this is the purpose of iron sharpens iron. Yeah. yeah. This is iron sharpens iron. The only way to get where we need to get is with each other and is together. Yeah. We do Amen. it in love and we thank you for sharing. Amen. Amen. And I see all the comments. Y'all was going in tonight. There was a lot of, y'all really, y'all really going with it tonight and we appreciate that. Thank we you. We appreciate that. And we're going to keep it going. Um, Please, please, please join us next week. We're going to get yes. more into... Yeah. The woman, because this is about a walk, yeah, and this is about yeah. life, and this is about our very soul, amen. So I thank Happy you all thanks. for coming, giving for everyone. Be safe, enjoy Be your up. holiday, enjoy, enjoy your holiday. it, stay safe, amen. Thank you for coming. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>